Hello. I want to talk about socialising when you're trying to build yourself up and achieve goals and work towards your dream. And I think it's quite interesting because for a while I've thought that I should probably limit socialising with my friends and going out, especially clubbing and going to bars and things like that. But recently I've changed my mind slightly, going to things like barbecues and seeing my friends back at home from uni, because I've been able to have some really good conversations with them and I think that can counter the the negatives of socialising, I suppose. Because I, I guess back in the day I thought, if I'm out socialising, that's less time that I'm working on myself, less time that I'm building my skills up and improving. So that is a negative in some way, because the less time you put in, the less you'll get out. But I've been listening to Chris Williamson's podcast quite a lot, and he really values this idea of presence, and this is going off the back of my previous video. And it's a really good way, you know, having conversations with people and socialising is a really good way to understand yourself and to learn, learn things about other people and what's working for them. And when I am at gatherings like barbecues, I find I, I never really like to share first. <laughs> Like if it, especially if it's somebody who I don't know very well who, or who I've met for the first time, I like to just tread the water a little bit first and find out, try and understand what kind of person they are before completely like opening myself up and talking about self improvement and you know the society I started at uni and this YouTube channel. But I think that's another topic altogether. But what I, what I like to do is really focus on listening to the other person and often they have really interesting things to say. Because I was at this barbecue the other day and I met this, I met this person who I, I never, never met before but it was the, the neighbour of this family who was hosting the barbecue and he just came, came round. And I just, I just started the conversation with him, I realised that he was talking about his diet, his meat diet, and then nobody was really, I think the person who he was talking to sort of went off and, you know, not, not in a purposeful, mean way, but just naturally stopped paying as much attention. So I went and said, oh, you've been, you've been doing this, have you, like, I think that's interesting, like, I want to know a bit more. And then we just carried the conversation on from there. But it's interesting how you can learn different things from people. And having deep conversations is almost a way of being introspective of yourself because you can, you, you are just comparing yourself to the other person and thinking, okay, in comparison, how, like, how is how does my lifestyle compare to theirs? But in this case, it was to do with diets, and in some ways, like our diet was quite similar, but we we shared different things with each other. Like I was saying that I I eat a lot of eggs. I have eggs ba most days, basically daily. And he's like, oh, that's right, that's cool. I used to always have that, but I think I went off them because um, they were giving me weird aches and. I don't think I was getting high quality, like free range organic eggs, and that's probably why they're making me feel a bit weird. I was like, oh, that's that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I only get the free range organic ones, and blah blah blah. But <laughs> you can have a lot of fun at these social gatherings as well. I mean, this guy was telling me that he used to be a vegan and now he only, he only eats meat 
and he was a skateboarder as well. He li he literally does. He was wearing flip flops. He told me that he went, he climbed a volcano in Indonesia in these flip flops that he was wearing, and that he did. Um, he won a hundred meter race the the day before I was talking to him in the flip flops. He also had a massive scar on his wrist because he'd fallen off his skateboard about two years ago and had to get a titanium rod through his wrist. And he was drinking, so you know, maybe he was letting more out than he normally would, but he got his skateboard from next door and he was teaching this young boy how to, how to or trying to encourage him to do it get on it and then he was showing us a few tricks because the little boy would roll the skateboard and then he'd jump on it and the boy was like, really excited about it and he did a few flips and he tried to go down the these stairs outside and he did it once well and then he did it another time and he and he fell quite badly and knocked a few things over knocked a bench over and he got up and he's like oh i'm i'm surprisingly okay it's because i've got stronger bones now just because i eat meat it's <laughs> so funny that I was talk talking to my friend Harry who I was at the barbecue with and it seems that he, he very much had um, like a complex about his past, about being a vegan. He seemed like a really happy guy though. Anyway, the other side of the argument that I've believed in for quite a while is that Well, there's this idea of monk mode where if you want to achieve goals and you want to build yourself up, learn new things, uh, develop your skills, then one of the best ways to do it is to work alone, essentially, for like quite a long period of time, at least three months, where you really focus on your craft and you're only looking in that direction. And you, you don't think about dating and you, you only, I don't know, you really dial down on all of your habits and you're like quite regimented. And that way you can see the most progress in your craft. And I think that is true. But then you can, you know, it's, it's hard finding the balance because if you have, if you do go to social events every week and... And see and see old friends from school. Do you slip slip back into the bad habits, and does that distract you away from your working mode? I think, I think it's a bit in between. I think it is probably best to just work alone for like three months and try and understand whether this is working for you, like whether you are seeing progress, and then. If it is, that's great, and you can like have a bit of socialising and a bit of introspection. I think introspection is the main important factor here, because if you're just going through life pushing harder and harder, and you know you might you may have set your goal a year ago, and you're just you're just going for that, like building a business, for example, you may get there, and then you re you may achieve that goal, and then you realise oh, that's not really what I wanted to do, and I've sort of wasted my time. <laughs> but I suppose that's the whole um, natural cycle of purpose, really. Your purpose changes over time. I definitely find that I'm interested in one thing vigorously, and then and then you, you move on to another thing. But... By socialising, it allows you to be um, introspective, and I don't find a lot of time. Well, I find a bit of time to do that to journal, but I, I spend more time socialising than I do journaling. So, if I can have deep conversations with my friends about what I'm doing and my beliefs and whether I'm moving in the right direction and wh whether that I'm sacrificing my mental health too much, whether I'm pushing myself too hard, which I don't think I am. That's good because it's, 
you're being reflective and it's not just future seeking so that links back to like the idea of presence as well I mean being a good listener and concentrating on what the person is saying is I, I find it quite therapeutic I really enjoy it just listening to the other person and waiting until they completely finish what they say and then asking a follow-up question that I that I'm personally interested in or to just keep the conversation going and then if I don't find, think of anything else to say or I think it's come to a natural end and then they will ask me a question and I can open up about myself and then that's where the deep conversation begins because I find if you interrupt somebody halfway through what they've said or, or you might ask them what do they do and then, and then they just say they say their job and they say oh that's really good and then they like see that as that's the end of like your question time to ask you a question but you can like ask a follow-up question or you can not say anything or just nod and they'll continue they'll elaborate a bit more and that way when they do eventually finish what they're saying and their, and their thought process and they ask you a question they'll be fully listening to you because they they they've said what they wanted to said previously it's now their turn to listen and then you get that really nice reciprocal conversation so that's a really big positive to socializing definitely on the other side you have this idea that it's sort of, sort of what i said before where if if you go and socialize with friends from school and old friends that you have will you slip back into the habits that that they have for example i i don't drink and when i go to these social occasions drinking is basically always involved do i think that i'm going to slip back into drinking Pro probably not because i'm quite steadfast in what I want to do and why I don't drink but it's not like I won't have a little bit on a special occasion but I, I, I don't get drunk at all anymore <laughs> because they have this there's this saying that you are the product of the three people you spend the most time with And in that, and I do think there is truth in that. You do have to let some friends go who don't want to see you grow and don't want to see you your skills build up. And then it's hard finding the balance between <laughs> let, letting some part. Like how how do you decide? Yeah, that's really really difficult. It's like you've got to try and categorise your friends and be like, who has the best habits and who should I still stay friends with when it doesn't really work like that in the end. There's different things that come into play in the friendships, obviously. <clears throat> so that's um, something I've got to think about more, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's basically what I have to say. I haven't. I need to think more about that idea of you are the product of the three three friends or three people that you spend the most time with, because you do copy each other's actions and characteristics. Yeah, but I've been I've been taking a lot more value recently out of having deep conversations with people, trying to be a good listener and listening to the end of what somebody's saying. And while you're listening, you can be present as well and um, use your like peripheral vision to take in the environment, what's happening around, while also focusing on what they're saying. And like, there's so much you can focus on, really, because you can focus on 
their vocabulary, like what, what words are they using, their like gestures while they're while they're talking, and then what what the meaning is that they're saying. Is there a deeper meaning behind what they're saying, and then how it also links to your life? And then I suppose if you want an extra level, you can also try and focus on your breath at the same time, but I think that's way too much. <laughs> well, yeah, this will be the end of the video. My hard drive has been getting fixed, um, which has some of the table tennis footage on it, so I'm going to go and pick that up today my drive got corrupted so I'm pretty sure they they should be fixed like the file should be there and I'll be making some more table tennis analysis videos so stay tuned for that and see you soon goodbye have a great rest of your day